Hi, so uh, welcome to the first video of the Come Dissect to Me, Come Dissect with Me tutorials and um, dissection sort of video help series. Um, so first things first, so what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is we're going to be focusing on the head and neck. and We're just going to be focusing on head and neck anatomy. Uh, so first things first, so we have the head right here. So what we'll do is um, just going to cut it right around here and cut it in a parasagit uh, just a sagittally way, so just down the middle and uh, we should get something that looks a little like this. Right, so it looks a bit confusing but um, with any and uh, this will be sort of the spinal cord right here. Um, but first things first, we're going to just uh, zoom in on this section right around here. And that's just the nose. And uh, it's easier to see that this is, you can see it quite easily if you just drew it like this. And uh, you can see that the floor is the bottom part right here, which is marked by the hard palette. Uh, sorry, that's all in black, but we are going to go over this in a bit more detail just in a second. Uh, I just want to make it clear that this is the posterior side. This is the anterior side. Right. Just a bit more easy if you do see it like this. Of course, first we'll just focus, as we're focusing on this area, we'll just focus on uh, the external areas of the nose. So let's just get straight into that. So uh, with the nose, there's different sort of cartilages and uh, the nose is quite important because uh, it helps. It's basically another inlet that helps us for breathing. And uh, this is a vital uh, part of the vital structure that helps us with uh, conditioning. Uh, conditioning meaning uh, it just helps remove dust and particulate and dirt when we do breathe in. Uh, so it allows the air to be free of any pathogens or any debris or material. That's uh, one of the functions of the nose. Uh, but right here we have a different sort of cartilages. Uh, all the cartilage type uh, is a hyaline cartilage. That's one thing to mention. Uh, but you do have ALA cartilage, which will be just down here. Uh, one of the last part of the cartilage is the septal cartilage, which is actually this one right here. So that'll be uh, the septal cartilage. Well, it's just outside on the, the side, just right here. That'll be septal cartilage. Uh, get rid of that. Okay, so just on the outside, we have uh, on the sides, we have septal cartilage as well, just here, and that will be septal cartilage. Right, and so the last piece of cartilage is known as uh, the septal cartilage. And that just sits right here, but yeah, that, that's basically the function of that, but we need to go inside and uh, dissect that area so we can see more and uh, if we did that it looks something like this uh, so we have the diff three main parts here so the superior concave and the concave are sort of if you split them you'll see they're shaped a bit like this uh, the sort of scroll shaped and that basically is sort of in a tubular structure so it can increase surface area so it allows for air to get trapped and it allows for rapid warming and uh, humidification uh, so it allows the air to be qu warmed quickly and uh, it, this can help in the breathing process and additionally um, there's a quite a large surface area and it allows for cooling as well and they are thin another thing to mention uh, this is the conche, by the way. 
and uh, the inferior contrae as well that separates the nasal cavity uh, into bilateral symmetrical caves as well so it separates the nasal cavity into two pieces so that's the inferior contrae um, where additionally where the tears are stored as well they also stored in the inferior contrae um, but a little few more labels you can add to this diagram as well these lines right here they're all meatuses and uh, if you look slowly so each each contrae has a, a corresponding meatus so the superior contrae will have the in superior meatus the uh, the middle contrae will have the middle meatus and the inferior contrae will have the inferior meatus you have a oh this is the fario pharyngeal tympanic tube uh, you have the auditory tube here as well tube and you also have uh, the salpingo or salpingo pharyngeal fold right here as well fold and that just helps um that that is just a sort of um, like a landmark just like a sort of thing you can use to identify uh, the position of the pharyngeal, pharyngeal tympanic tube there's also this tube is um, the opening of the pharyngeal tympanic tube is also known as the opening of the eustachian or auditory tube as well um, uh, we'll get more to that in a bit but uh, for now we'll just carry on um, with this so um, another thing is there's uh, the nasal cavity there'll be little pulps here and these pulps also they allow smell to occur um, so they'll be lined with olfactory uh, epithelium there's uh, the nasal polyps as well and the soft non-cancerous growths in the nasal cavity and uh, these can be uh, due to so nasal pulps can be due to uh, immune disorders and various diseases and they allow smell they can allow smell to occur as well and they act um they act as a non-specific immune defense as well and they remove mucus yeah, so let's get on to these little pieces right here. So these little air-filled spaces are actually known as sinuses. And we have four sinuses. Uh, there'll be a better diagram just here. So we actually have four different sinuses. Um, there's the maxillary sinuses, easily known as they found in the cheeks. You have the sinuses right here, which will be the frontal sinuses. And then, of course, you have the arithmoidal sinuses right here. Arithmoidal sinuses. And this one as well as this little piece right here these will this one will actually be the sphenoid uh, sinus and um, with sinuses uh, these air filled spaces they basically help to light lighten the skull uh, so it's not too heavy it can uh, it drains mucus during an immune response and um, it helps with uh, voice control and uh, breathing as well um, so yeah that's a little bit about the sinuses and um, there are different different uh, parts of these sinuses and with the nasal cavity 
uh, it actually has openings in it and the openings lead to these paranasal sinuses and uh, also the nasolacrimal duct and another thing to mention is that the uh, the sinus that's most likely to be infected in adults anyway is uh, actually uh, the maxillary sinus which can be uh, infected by toothache grinding and grind, grinding of the teeth and is also prone to uh, bacterial uh, entering into it and um, is the most likely to get affected and uh, i had just mentioned nasolacrimal duct and the nasolacrimal duct is just a tear duct that i mentioned drains into the inferior conchi uh, from the previous slide just uh, here just here the inferior conchi uh, it's not labeled oh it is the inferior conchi and uh, that just produces tears when someone cries or has an allergy and uh, you can get a pretty difficult disease called uh, epiphora where the duct is blocked and it can lead to swelling, itching and eye infections and a timocyst uh, can also be formed around the eyes which can cause an eye infection but that's not too important so we won't really get into that. Right, so uh, let's move down. So this we've just covered uh, is all part of the actual nasopharynx. So just gonna go back to this diagram. So we can go back. So just this little border right here, we've covered and that's actually all inside this black box. That's all the nasopharynx we've just done. And uh, you can see that this hard palette right here and the soft palette right here is sort of the border line between uh, the nasopharynx but we're just going to go down now into the mouth and still work on a bit of the nasopharynx and uh, see what there is over there so it's just this one and uh, as you can see from the mouth we've got different parts here so we'll do the same thing again so we've got the hard palette which we should label the soft palette right here and of course you have the different um, tonsils which is what we should get onto so you actually have four different types of tonsils or four tonsils so you have the one of the roof of your mouth so that's actually called the adenoid or the pharyngeal tonsil depending on what textbook you use and then you have one right here and that is actually known as the tubal tonsil uh, you can kind of memorize that because it comes quite close well it is basically part of the auditory tube uh, right on the roof of the mouth you're gonna have the, your um sort of here it's actually just yeah just around here so at the back of the tongue uh well at the top of the well at the sides of the mouth just right here and already the back of the tongue the back of the tongue has a characteristic very easy known and well known tonsil type and that's the lingual tonsil or tonsil yeah so back onto this one this one is just the palatine tonsil palatine tonsil and this is um hidden between two arches right here on either side these two arches and uh, the first arch is known as the uh, palatoglossal arch glossal arch and the second is known as the palato pharyngeal arch Arch. and it is worth mentioning that the area this entire area here is known as the buccal region buccal region yeah pretty bad handwriting but sorry about that and uh, 
So the larynx is the last, but not the last piece, but it sort of nicely goes down from the part that we're just focusing on. Um, so the nose and the tonsils and all that sort of area. And it's just down here, it sits comfortably. And uh, it's worth mentioning that the larynx isn't positioned exactly um, from top to bottom, not in a vertical position, it's usually slanted to a certain position. Anyway, so uh, with the larynx, um, what you'll have is, um, well, well, the larynx primary function will be for helping with breathing. It also helps produce sounds and um, it protects the uh, trachea against uh, food in uh, whilst you're breathing, so during inspiration, so it stops food going down the wrong pipe. And uh, yeah, so. Let's so yeah. Another thing with the larynx is um the larynx is actually innervated by the inferior laryngeal nerve which will come just down here and uh, there also is a superior laryngeal nerve and a blood supply as well, superior laryngeal artery. Uh, but they come from here, so they'd be here at superior, just right, S, L, N, and inferior, I, L, N, just here, so they'll come down here, and uh, the inferior laryngeal nerve actually um, innervates most of the laryngeal muscles, so that's another thing to mention, the hyoid bone sort of acts as a barrier, and it separates it, and another thing just as you go deeper within the body you have uh, just above the larynx uh, you have the epiglottis and when you have the epiglottis you'll actually have the vocal folds as well they look a bit like this so with the vocal folds of course you've got the epiglottis right here the epiglottis uh, sort of if you just go to the with the diagram it'll help visualize it a bit better so the we're just focusing on this area right here so as you're going down it's just this section so with the vocal folds you have the epiglottis uh you have this this is sort of from a perspective, if I was going to just say it, I'd say that this is the right side, this is the left side. Uh, you have the epiglottis on top. You also have uh, the part of the tongue coming down here. And uh, these here on the sides are the vocal cords. And this little space in between has also got a name. That space is called the rima glottidis um, here's the vocal folds on this diagram uh, these are also known as false vocal cords but uh, for like sort of accurate name for them would just be vestibular folds and uh, yeah that's the vocal cords And right here, we have a little disease. Any guesses what this disease could be? It's just referring, or well, it's related to what we just covered. Um, this disease is actually tonsillitis. Tonsillitis. And uh, here you can see that the sides of the mouth are inflamed and uh, there's accumulation of bacteria. Just right, inflammation. And uh, yeah, with tonsillitis, um, yeah, it's uh, basically just swollen lymph nodes due to the accumulation of bacteria. But it's worth mentioning that uh, this is so with the 
balance, you also have a different type of cartridge as well. Uh, the, the main cartridge will be the thyroid cartridge, easiest to spot as well as it sits right the front, just around here. And I'm not going to cover this back part, it just sits here, just this area right here. And uh, we also have uh, the other cricoid cartridge, which is like the sort of part that sits underneath and it. It's the part that the track here sort of joins into and uh, it's a comfortable fit and it allows uh, for there to be like a, a sort of barrier between the track here or the start of the track here and the larynx as well. Now if we go back to the first diagram we can now find the, we've, we know we've covered this part. So this was the nasopharynx that we first covered. The next part that we just covered was the oropharynx. And then the boundary just between the oropharynx and uh, the laryngopharynx. Pharynx, the border just there, well, what, what sort of separates them out is an area just here. Well, it should be flapping down here, it's just this. And that is the epiglottis, so just label it here. Epiglottis, don't know if you can see that. Just bring it up to this side. The epiglottis. Oh, where the, uh, around where the vocal folds are. And uh, that's all of the dissection of the head and neck covered. And uh, maybe next time we'll go over the thoracic cage. So thank you very much for watching this video and uh, subscribe and like. Thank you.